today we're going to run through what we did to set up our inverter. Everyone's is going to be a tiny bit different, but the basics are kind of going to be the same depending on your setup, obviously. But anyways, let's run it down. So we got ourselves the inverters right here. We mounted it to the ceiling. Again, you might have to mount it to the wall. You might have to bring it inside. Just depends on your compartment size and places where you're keeping your battery and things like that. This I just kept in here. My friend recommended it just in case if this ever fell down, it wouldn't connect the two batteries and basically cause like an electrical explosion or fire or something like that. All right, so it may seem a little confusing. Starting with the electrical panel on the inside, it's pretty basic. We basically ran two wires into an empty breaker. So you got your white and your black and your ground wire. See, so we ran those in <clears throat> into the electrical panel on an empty breaker, 15 amp. No worries. We brought that wire right here. You'll see this white wire back there. So that's what that wire is. Okay, then we splice that. My friend again recommended it might, might work out better if we splice that. So we splice that into two uh, wall plugs, just like a regular wall plug. Plus two, two plugins which plugged into our inverter. Our inverter has three plugs, you may have six. We're getting these fuses too hot by overloading just one plug. That's why we split it into two, just in case. So uh, again, you may not have to do that. It's just more extra precaution. Okay, so now we've got that plugged in. The inverter is basically running the electrical panel now because if you don't know the basics of an electrical panel, all the breakers, especially if the power is going into the breaker, there's something called a buzz bar where all your breakers attach to. So when you put electricity through there, um, it, it buzzes the buzz bar, which turns every single breaker on or uh, live. So now you can shut the breaker off and it's not live anymore. So we, we do that when we have to uh, shut the inverter off. We just hit the breaker off, which cuts the electricity. You learned that in elementary. Um, Okay, so other than that, uh, just an, another small detail is we have the main power source. So if we were gonna plug in at a campsite, we'd go into the breaker panel again, make sure the inverter was off, and then we would turn the breaker on that comes from this wire that's gonna be going to your campsite plug-in, just because you don't want those both on at the exact same time, because you can have, again, some issues with like way too much uh, surging or electrical fires or anything like that. You just don't want to don't want to do that so you shut the inverter off then go to that power or shut or unplug from the campsite and turn your inverter on okay after that we got these two red and black wires here comp they came with the inverter um, so these wires came down they came with little clips on them we rewired little tiny hoops on the end which if you buy a new battery they come with um, the regular um, outlets, I can't remember what these are called right now, and they got the uh, small ones for little things like solar panels. This is an RV or marine battery, so it has those extra features. Okay, um, so basically that's going to go positive to positive, negative to negative. That's what these little terminals are for. We're going to screw those down. Okay. Hook these bad boys up, which came with the camper. So these go all the way to the front. There's a uh, electrical switch that basically tells uh, the camper when to charge the battery, which is basically once you start the vehicle, the alternator spins, charges this battery while you're driving. That's awesome, that's what you want. The other thing we added in was a solar panel. So that's what this other wire is. So the, again, it just had, we just put two little hoops on the end of a wire. Our solar panel came in, came with a plug-in, so we just cut cut the wire, split it across, put these little hoops on again. So we screwed those down at the exact same time. That runs down, we drilled a hole there, comes out under the vehicle, up the side, we taped it. We had another little splice here, you can see the wire changes colors, just for some extra length. And then we just used these, these uh, screws that were already in the camper, just unscrewed them, put the little hoops in, and then uh, we just, glued the solar panel to the roof it built again up up and over to our solar panel okay so that's a product called pl the glue we use it's pl premium it's the best it's liquid concrete to be honest even crazier than concrete it'll last forever and holds like crazy um 
Other than that, we in the future, maybe once we get settled back home, we might uh, turn this battery sideways and put a second battery in, which again, we'll disconnect those with these little hoops over to the new battery. So then we instantly double the size of our uh, capacity basically by having two batteries instead of one. So we're having a little bit of issues and uh, with not having enough juice with our laptops and cell phones and the, the pump and the camper and our okay. Instapot and our rice cooker always kicking things out. So we need to leave the van running to, to use these appliances. Whereas we don't want to do that because that obviously costs gas and is a little harder on the environment. Um, so we'll put a second battery in, turn it sideways, so then we'll double the size. And then the last thing is when you go to run a wire through any kind of metal, you can see back there, right here, oh, right here. Um, right there, we just put some tape on there because this edge right here can get really sharp and it'll start to cut the wire. So we put some tape on there for some reinforcement. And what I'm gonna do next is add a little bit more tape and then I'm going to put that PL premium or uh, probably even some caulking around there just to keep what they call meth it's methane gas. So when you have batteries set up, like me sitting here right now, I can smell kind of like a fart smell. That's methane gas. Um, so when you have the door closed, it builds up. And when we go away, for example, for the day go mountain biking, we come back and our camper kind of smells like uh, propane or some kind of gas, right? And so I figure it's just because this compartment and especially if we turn the fan on inside, we turn the fan on, this is filled with gas. It sucks it into that hole and brings it right into our living space. So then it smells. I'm hoping by caulking that and even these couple little holes I see here that are on the sides that the smell will go away for us and we'll keep the gases in here because the methane gas is technically flammable if you have enough of it and you have a large enough spark. And uh, that's pretty much everything I can tell you right now. If you have any questions about inverters or wiring your own inverter, I noticed there's like, there's some ba really basic videos online, but I found it really tough when I was trying to learn about inverters, like how to wire them and how things were gonna work out. So I hope this one helps you. And let me know if you have any questions and get your, get your power on. This is the 30 amp, which runs from your campsite. So when, again, you plug in, I'm gonna come in here, turn this on. You'll have electricity to the buzz bar in the back, which turns all these breakers on. Um, except unless they're off and then they're, they're not on. Okay, so I leave that off most of the time because we're not plugged in very often. And I have our inverter plugged into this breaker right here. So when I turn this on, you hear that noise? So up here is a transformer, which basically does the opposite of what an inverter does. So it turns AC into DC, whereas your inverter turns DC into AC, okay? So that buzzes for some reason. I haven't got into that with too much detail. I just know it works, so I don't mess with it right now. Um, so we turn that on. We're good to go. We have power in all of our plugs. Everything is now AC power. When we don't want that, like we're done charging our phones and cooking and things like that, hit that switch. The power goes back to DC. Now our fans, our pump, everything can run on DC as well because we have uh, this box here as well. Um, so other than that, so it's just a little less power, wastes, wastes a lot less. Another example I can quickly show you, if I turn this fan on, okay, you notice how it's uh, moderately loud. Now when I turn the inverter on, the fan is going to have more electricity because the inverter gives it more juice. So here we go. See that? Now I'm going to switch it back to D, now it's in AC, like a house power. Now it's back into DC, like a car battery power. So that's the difference. So again, when we're not using it for important things like the plugins, that's what we installed it for. We turn it back to DC, save the power, but we still have the, the, the fan going. So another one last tip again with the extra juice. If I turn this light on, if you watch these lights, okay, DC, AC, right? DC, AC. So now the problem with that is you'll notice over here in our kitchen where there's a cover, when people either, the last people who owned it, they put the wrong light bulbs or 
um, when they plugged into the campsite, they turned it on, but it gave the light bulbs a lot more juice than they're used than this uh, camper was designed for. So they started melting out all the bottoms of our lights. So make sure you get the right light bulbs or that uh, you somehow, yeah, I would just go with the right light bulbs. That's the easiest way to avoid that. Otherwise, we try not to turn these on unless we're just on DC. If the inverter's on, we shut all the lights off.